that's enough of that. Well, folks, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. And here in, um, what, what city are you living in? Lake, nice. ba Lake Balboa. Yes, yeah, Lake Balboa. And uh, joined here by a master drummer and a fantastic human being, Stephen Ferroni. Welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. Thank you very much. I was watching a YouTube clip before um, you came home, and uh, the engineer with Petty was saying when you came into that studio, the, the drums were going, someone's drums were going out. Yes. And you were, you were like, is this a rehearsal or not? And basically when you came in, at that point, the engineer, I forget his name, said, T Tom doesn't need to worry about the drums anymore. Right. What does that mean? Well, uh, uh, you know, I guess uh, you kind of create a, a comfort zone around around uh, whatever the leaders. That's what I do. I mean, I, I kind of figure out where their comfort zone is, and then uh, and then then uh, let them have it. You know, so they don't really have to. Uh, they really shouldn't have to think about what I'm playing. You know, it's kind of like if you're playing with a bass player, you really shouldn't have to think about what he's playing. A bass, a bass Mike, I guess the better question is this. What is someone like Petty concerned about with a drummer? Is it what we just talked about with tempo, slowing down and speeding up? Yeah, and it was about when a, when a kid goes, goes bad and goes, goes crazy. You know, trying to think of what, what happened to the kid. You, know? you want to know something so crazy? Is that that entire thing that you riffed on with Petty? Yeah. It, it, the internet disconnected. Now it's back on. We missed that whole story, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Tom doesn't want that stuff being shared. My but, internet went down. Well, the, the wireless was like it was like you know, and I didn't finish. It. I said it's going to uh, come back. It's going to come back. So just for the audience who missed it, Petty was worried about a cat that could that was either that just couldn't keep the tempo. I mean, you well, locked yeah, that in. I mean, it was, yeah, he, he didn't want to have to. He wanted to, have to, to think about what he was playing in the song and about how the song was going. He didn't want to have to think about what I was playing. Absolutely, yeah. uh, Stephen Ferroni. I want to. I was curious about this in, in France. Did you run across guys like Jagger and McLaughlin at that time? And was no. there a Chitlin circuit in Europe? Uh, there was a circuit. And yeah, when I lived in in, uh, in Italy, there was a circuit for sure. It was, I worked with a guy named Ronnie Jones. Yeah, he, he's in Milan now. He's 80 years old. God bless him. What 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 instrument does Ronnie play? He was a singer. A singer. So yeah. the, okay. So and then can you talk about the the towns you would visit? Uh, well, we play like in uh, oh Rimini and uh, Milan, Torino. We played in Torino a lot. There was a club in Torino uh, called uh, Macuno. It was a, a, a pretty good club. For, for musicians to play, and that was where I met Brian Auger. Then. Really? Yeah. In uh, in the Macuno, and uh, Rome, of course, uh, Naples, uh, Bologna, um, and a lot of little towns that sort of surrounding that. They used to have these big clubs sort of surrounding some of these little towns. There was a little town outside of Florence that we used to play, but uh, they had a big club. And so people would drive out to these locations and uh, just dance and listen to bands. Um, so, but as far, did you meet the blues masters from this country that you got to play with, like on that Burglar record? Like, no, where, where, I never got how to did you like? Did you only meet them when you came here? I never. I, I never. Well, I met them. I met. I met some of them. Some of them here in in the United States, and mainly when I was with Petty, that's when I got to meet them. But um, I used to go and see them play. They used to come and play on on tours in uh, in. Uh, in England, they come and play at the Dome in Brighton, and uh, the, the 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 older guys. I was like 12 years old, and I was playing with these guys who were 18, and uh, they they uh, used to take me down to see these guys play. I, I should have paid more attention, really. <laughs> was the music? Did you get off on the music? Oh yeah. Or you just look in the all the? No, I loved yeah. it. I loved it. What about what did you about the feel of the of the shuffle? Did did you did you learn? At the, what was the th the thing that you took away the most? Was it just the authenticity of what they were, what they were? I just loved their pocket. It was like it was the, the way there was some things that you know. It was funny because I was talking to I was talking I went I was back in Brighton uh, uh, last year, and I went and visited the guy who was the lead singer in that in my first band, and uh, and we were reminiscing about when they used to. Basically, I was thanking him for taking me to see those guys. Right. And he, and he said stuff like, well, you know, remember they used to do things like a 13 and a half bar blues? And I said, you know, it's funny because like over the years I've learned that they used to do these, these odd measures, but it would, be, it would be something that would repeat. I don't know whether it was like they just sort of add like one bar 
somewhere. It wasn't just like a straight 12 bar that they would play. They would add a bar somewhere, you know, or, or a bar and a half sometimes. But it was, it was always had this... Uh, but when you listen to it, it was always like, well, did somebody just make a mistake? You know? it, this is fascinating because how much of that had to do with the fact that the guitar was not a lead instrument? At, at, well, in the sense that it was more of a rhythm instrument. It was a rhythm instrument, yeah. And so therefore it was, they could stretch more. Yeah, and they could add a place for a breath too. You know, it could breathe. It would be like music has trouble. Just like I had an extra beat somewhere. You know, they just. But it would be it would be something that they would always do. It would always be there. That extra beat. Um. One cat I've actually not asked you about is George Duke. Yeah. Uh. The the YouTube clips are ferocious. They're they're great. Your your playings. What did you? How did you meet George? And then ultimately. What is? What did you get off on the most in that band? Oh well, you know, I met George through Jeffrey Osborne. Um, Jeffrey Osborne. Um, what was his original band? Um, You're asking the wrong cat. Uh, uh, they did Back in Love again. Um, if the audience knows, please chime in. <laughs> uh, I don't even have my. No, don't even worry. Don't, I even. <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, but but Je Osborne it, it, it told Duke about you. How, how did that work? Yeah. Well, Jeffrey Jeffrey was in this band, and they were opening. They used to open for Average White Band, and we were in a party in Bowling Green. I never forget it. We were in Bowling Green, Ohio, and we were in this like room in this uh, after party, after show party. It was all these people in this room, and Jeffrey came through the crowd. And he said, when I do my solo album, you're going to play drums on it. Yeah. And I said, yeah, 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 Jeffrey, have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, it was like some years later, uh, I got this phone call uh, from George's uh, uh, people. And like, can you come out and do the record? Jeffrey's doing a solo record. Will you come out and play on it? And so I came out, and that was where I got to meet George and uh, play with Lewis Johnson and... Uh, and all the guys that he had on the record, it was just great. Yeah. In, in the live, were the show, were the sh were the live shows different than what came out on the recording? I mean, did you did you improvise more in a live setting, or no. was the audience coming? Part of my issue today is it's a formula trip. I mean, yeah. you, you <clears throat> just going back to the Oblivion Express albums, you listen to the studio tracks and they're great. You listen to them live, and they go up tenfold. Yeah, it, it, it's well, burning. And the audience, whether they appreciated it, whether they cared, you didn't care because you were loving the music. And the music felt so good, and there was a lot of collective consciousness at that time. Are you talking about the George Duke tour? Well, no. What I, well, I guess I segue. I'm just talking about the idea with Duke. Yeah. yeah. Specifically, was it very, uh, was it like, you know, very understood? Well, had, or or was, was there room for a lot of imp openness? Well, he had... Um... He had, uh, I mean, you could pretty much, you could pretty much do, 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 do what you want. But he had these songs. I mean, he had, he had these things that he was doing. He had a great rhythm section. Uh, um, uh, uh, Paul Jackson Jr. Uh, and, and and Lewis Johnson and George. You know? And um, and it was, uh, it, it was, it was all pretty easy. It all just fell, fell together pretty easy. But it was a little bit different the, the stuff because George George was producing more sort of straight R&B stuff and his stuff always had like a little bit of something extra to it like it's something a little bit sort of left field would come out left field it was the psychedelic thing of the Bay Area or something yeah. I, I feel that I want you to talk to younger cats out there watching Worldwide um, what were your intentions for getting into music just to play I just thought I just wanted to play and you play? Do you play for free a lot? Yeah, I, I played. I played for free. I just played. You know. Uh, well, you know, it was like it was kind of it was kind of weird. It was like uh, uh, I loved doing it, and because I loved doing it, I would make money doing it somehow. You know, I mean, I I don't even remember what I got paid for playing in. Uh, I used to play in this band Gonzalez in England, and we used to make a little bit of money. Nothing. You know, it was a bunch of studio musicians that would get together and go. Play at Ronnie Scott's. What was the instrumentation? Oh, the big horn section. It was, a, it was like you know, five piece horns, of, uh, two guitars. It was a big, big R and B band. Yeah, yeah. And was there a lead singer? A couple of different ones. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so, so you would, and but that wasn't there wasn't a lot of money to go around. No, but we'd have a lot of fun doing it, and 
people would come then to, to the club, like producers and stuff would come to the club. That was where I got uh, uh, the Freddie King album. That they hired that band to play on the Freddie, on the Burglar album, on Freddie King's album. Um, you have a gig tomorrow night? Can you, or you're, you're sitting in at a jam? Tomorrow, so, tomorrow morning. No, but tomorrow morning, <laughs> well, well, I'll be there. But then uh, Julia, your your wife, your lovely wife, was, oh, yeah, was yeah, talking yeah. about like like. My, you, to my girlfriend. It's girlfriend. Yeah. So yeah, girlfriend. Uh, can you can you talk about the cats you're playing with and how how much fun it is? You know why it's fun to play with Toshi and yeah, with uh, Toshi and Jurgen. Well, you know T Toshi's got we we play we play like film music. Sometimes it's a uh, 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 Enter the Dragon or At L Lalo Schifrin or, yeah. or the Henry Mancini stuff, yeah, the it, cop show themes. That's right. It, we do that, and then there's some other stuff that he does, which is always like a little bit. A little bit strange. Some of some stuff that he's written himself. Uh, I, I think he's doing this song, Thunderbird, which is kind of like. A... It's just uh, it's one of those one of those things. You know? It's a uh, guitar driven. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean. It's just fun to play. You haven't been to the uh, baked potato when we play, right? No, no, I've not been there. You have a gig there every month or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the jam set. I want you. To, what does a jam session look like in 2018? In, insofar as like you're playing a couple of tunes tomorrow night. Yeah. How many cats are showing?